and welcome to my very first Lipstick and Lashes Live with Tina. I am, I'm a little bit nervous, and so we'll just see how this goes. I am going to be getting ready for work today, so I'm going to be putting on some makeup. I have some new things from e.l.f. and Flower Beauty, and we're just going to see how they go on, and hopefully we'll have some folks joining us here. So that's exciting. I just pulled up the live on my laptop so that I can see comments and it's there. So that's good news. And I am going to, oh, we have some people here. Hi, Erica, how are you? I am so glad you joined in. And Erin, hello. So we're going to be getting ready for work today, and I have some things from Flower Beauty and Elf that I got in that I've been waiting to use. Actually, I haven't been waiting to use them. I've used them already. And, oh, Erica, you're working from home. Cool. All right, so... And I've already forgotten something. I need something to get my hair out of my face. One second. I'm back. <laughs> Aaron, meet Erica. Erica, meet Aaron. Two really good friends of mine. How are you guys doing today? So one of the first things that I got, okay, so I did this elf order and I got four free gifts. It was a great time to order. And the gifts they sent me were this hydrating coconut mist. And I don't normally use a hydrating mist, but I'm going to try it this time. So let's see what it does before. Oh, nice mist. Yeah, it's really hot, isn't it? This is ridiculous. Although it is great haying weather. So um, my husband's happy because he got some hay down yesterday. That smells very coconutty. So if you don't like coconut, you won't like it, but it felt good. And hopefully with the heat and my oily skin, using a hydrating mist isn't going to make me look like a disco ball later on. Um, I got this Sea Bright primer. It's the new primer from Elf. 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 And see, this you guys don't get to see all of these stumbles because I edit them out. This is going to be like the real true me. I actually know Erin in real life, Erica. We I've known her before YouTube. Um, our daughters dance together and we go to church together. So this texture is just like the regular putty primers. It just has this kind of yellow color. And let's see what it feels like on the skin. I don't know if it's blurring because I don't actually have the claims up. I figured if I had too many things open, I was going to mess something up. So we'll just try it. It seems like maybe it's a little bit blurring like their putty primers. If you guys hear water running, my daughter's outside doing chores and she has to run the water to fill the tanks to feed the cattle, so. Okay, that feels pretty good. It has, obviously it has some skincare ingredients, the C, if you're using, um, stuff with vitamin C in it, you want to make sure you use your uh, SPF. I mean, you should be doing that every day anyway, but especially if you're using stuff with antioxidants and such, and I already have that on. 
So, like I was saying, with my elf order, they sent me a whole bunch of free gifts. So this was one of them. I also got this. Okay, this is weird. This is backwards. Um, this pure skin moisturizer. This is one of their from the new line. And then a bite size blush and highlighter in what is this one? Cantaloupe. And there was one other thing. Oh, this um, putty bronzer that I'm going to use later. This one is in the color. <sighs> I came prepared because I cannot see this tiny little writing. So here we go. Here's the L. Feeling shady. And this one is a really cool tone. So I'm going to use this as my contour and then I'm going to use a bronzer over it because I have a new flower bronzer as well. So that has set for just a little bit, which I like to do with a primer. And I'm going to also prime my eyes. I've been using this AOA Studio, uh, no, Soft Base Nude Eye Primer. Um, this one I got in my Shop Miss A haul and I did a video on that not too long ago. And since I used up all of my e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer, and I can't find it anymore. I've decided that this is going to be my new primer. It works really well. It has a an opaque kind of creamy color, so it will co cover up those lines and veining and discoloration that we might have on our eyes, that I have on my eyes. And it does a good job holding on to the eyeshadow all day long too. So Aaron, what are you guys up to today? And Erica, what do you do? I know that I know that you work, and it's great that you get a chance to work from home so, sometimes, but I'm not sure exactly what your employment is. And you may have already told me, but old timers has set in and I don't remember things very well. Oh, you guys are still doing school? Do you school year-round, Erin? I don't think I knew that. Okay, so my eyes are primed, my face is primed, and I'm going to go on to foundation. I have actually two foundations that I want to use. Lead administrator. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So normally you don't homeschool through the summer, but it just kind of is. I get that. And Erica, I remember now you told me you started a new job. And do you like it? How's it going? So the Light Illusion from Flower Beauty is one that I wanted to try for a really long time. I did really love the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer, but I haven't, I used it up and I haven't repurchased it because Jessica Braun said that they, she thought it had been reformulated and it wasn't quite the same. And I really like this L'Oreal Age Perfect and the Radiant Concealer, I think it is exactly the same formula that the Flower Beauty originally was. So rather than take a chance on the reformulation, I just use this one now. Anyway, so Flower Beauty and my color in this is, how did they make this easy? I don't know, I don't see it anywhere. And then the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation, and this color is Bisque. I am working really, really hard to, found a, to find a foundation from e.l.f. that I like. So far, I have not been successful. Oh, thank you, Erica. And I just went to Dollar, Dollar Tree. They have new summer stuff out, and so I'm going to give a little revamp to my background with some summery stuff. And it's kind of going to be put me in mood for in the mood for Florida because it's all beachy and so anyway, keep an eye out. I think I'm gonna do a Dollar Tree haul to show it all and then decorate my background in the video. I think that'll be fun. Oh, thanks, Erin. 
<laughs> okay, I have to admit that a lot of my dupes are actually from things I've picked up from other people because I don't actually have the high end stuff, so I can't compare it directly. But um, sometimes it is good to be able to even do drugstore products because they have a tendency of discontinuing the stuff that you really love. Okay, so this is going to be a little weird because I'm putting one foundation on one side of my face. The e.l.f. is going to go on the right side of my face, the side with the boxes. And then the flower is going to go on the left side of my face, the side with the plants and the picture, okay? The colors are a little bit different, but not enough, I don't think, to make a problem when it's on my face. But, I mean, I work alone, so it's not like anybody's going to see me if my face is a little bit different color. So let's put on the elf first. Okay. And it's a little bit warm, but it blends out. I think it's going to blend out pretty good. At least it did on my hand. And I usually end up going too light on foundations, so having one that seems like it's going to be dark probably is going to end up just fine. And I'm wave waving at my daughter out the window. She has to feed her bottle calf and water the big cows and feed the dog and things like that. So she's out there doing that right now. Yeah, so that color is actually pretty good. And it blended out really nice. And the finish is good. It doesn't seem to be catching or gathering weird anywhere. So, which is a problem I had with the Camo CC. It just emphasized every dry patch I have ever seen. Oh, genderwear, hi. Yes, the CYO Life Proof. I know, I love that one, and I'm looking for a dupe as well. I will let you know if I find something. I do, have you tried the Misha BB Cream? It's not exactly the same, but it's really close. Okay, now we're gonna get that flower on the other side. I am notorious for finding something, considering it holy grail status, and then the company discontinues it, so. Erin, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's hard to pick a foundation, especially, oh, I should use a clean side of the sponge so that I don't confound my results here. Hang on, let me put that. Okay. Um, especially with drugstore stuff where you can't test, test it. Um, and the bottle, the lighting in the store is horrible. And so you hold it up to your face through the bottle and you're kind of like, oh, well, maybe. But I return foundations when that happens. And you can, especially Walmart will take foundations, will take makeup back. Um, and I don't feel bad about it because they could, I mean, well, not with COVID, but they could offer testers too. And that would save them, the cost of the testers would probably save them in the amount of returns that they get. But now, I would not return a foundation if I were buying it simply to test it, but if it doesn't work for me or if it's the wrong color, then I do return it. Oh, yeah, the smell. There, there is a smell to it. Let me see what I have down here that might also be similar. Not the Joe. There was one... I have one that's similar, but I can't find it. Mm. I'll keep my eye out, Jen, uh, and let you know. Okay, so why, why am I dark on, which side is dark? This side is dark. Let me turn up my light. That better? That lighting better? Um, the finishes on these two are similar, but I think the flower is just a little bit more glowy than the elf. But so far, I do like 
the finish. I actually think I'm a little more blurred on the elf side. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to concealer. And I don't have an e.l.f. or a flower concealer because I have, I did have them and I do like them. The e.l.f. I had the camo hydrating concealer and the flower I had the um, companion to this, the light illusion. And I completely used both of them up, but I have an entire drawer full of concealers. So I can't buy an, a new one. So we're just gonna go with this, Rev, I'm sorry, not Revlon, Maybelline, Better Stay, Super Skin, Better Skin. Man, I butchered that. Super Skin Better Stay. And it has kind of that warmer uh, coloring that these foundations have. But I can't do that yet because another new product I got is the Flower Beauty Con Corrector in Light Peach. And I'm still looking for a great corrector because I have a lot of darkness under my eyes, especially this side is darker and right in this area. So I really want to try to cover that darkness and the peach is, you know, if you look at the color wheel on the opposite side, then it cancels out that purple blue color. And this, I really like this corrector. Um, it's the right amount of creaminess, but not too creamy that it sets in all of those little fine lines and wrinkles. And I just tap it in with my finger because the warmth of my finger helps it to meld with my skin better. And I just put it where I need it. You want to not get too much product under your eyes. So I never take my foundation up there. And then the corrector only use as much as you need. Tap it in, wipe your finger. And Oh, Jen, I was able to find the Misha, by the way, in uh, a TJ Maxx one time. And even though it's not a very expensive foundation, it was actually a little bit cheaper there. So I don't know if you have one near you or you go to TJ Maxx very often, but you might find it there. And now we're going to go into the Maybelline Superstay Better Skin. This color is 10 Ivory. And I'm just going to put a couple of dots kind of following that eye bag right there. Because the lighter color will help bring that out a bit. So Jen, what are you up to today? Is it hot where you are? I need to figure out what to use to correct the darkness that's developing under my eyes. I'm sort of lost with that. Just not sure what to use. Yeah, that's um, that's what I've been doing too with this hunt for the perfect color corrector. And a lot of times the color correctors are too deep for me. They have this really peach salmony tone and you can see it under my concealer. So this one I really like. Uh, what did I do with it? Erica, this flower one, this corrector. I also have the Bobbi Brown corrector and it's okay. It's kind of got that same peachy tone there. Um, I used one from Believe Beauty that wasn't bad. It was a little dry. This one is a little more emollient for me and I do have oily skin. So if you have drier skin, you might like this one, but it's also really expensive. And I think this one does just as well, if not better. So. I know for a lot of people, this Bobbi Brown is their holy grail. And, oh, you're in Washington too. You're up around Erica then. Do you guys get much summer up there? Does it ever get like really hot? I've never been to that part of the country. I am going to now take my e.l.f. concealer sponge. And I don't know if you've seen me do this in any of my videos, but what I like to do is use a little powder puff and straighten out the skin under my eyes. I was noticing that if I just tap it in, I get this like wave like wrinkles in my concealer and it's, it's just not cute. So straightening it out just a little bit before I tap that in. 
helps to remove any excess product from the wrinkles and not press it into the wrinkles. We had a really rainy, chilly, cool spring. And then somewhere in the end of May, beginning of June, it decided to be summer. So we went from like 50 cloudy, rainy to 90. And we just didn't have hardly anything in between. Hot usually in July and August. Do you guys have air conditioning? I know um, I had a friend who was up in the Oregon area and they didn't have AC because it didn't get hot very often, but boy, when it did, she was miserable. Okay, I had a tissue on my table, but I do not know what happened to it. So we will just proceed and see if I can figure out where I am. Ah, I went to powder. I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me powder. I love this powder, one of my very, one of my top three. and since I'm out of the number seven light illusion that I like to use under my eyes, I'm going to use this both on my under eyes and my face, but I'm going to use a cream bronzer, so I'm not going to powder my face yet. What's your favorite powder? Do you guys have one that you that's your go-to if you want if you need to powder that you will use when you want it to last all day? So I'm going to tap my brush here in the lid with a little bit of the powder, tap off the extra. And then even though I just put that concealer on, just tapped it out, I am going to go ahead and make sure that I don't have any creases because my face has been moving as I've been talking. And so I will pat that out as well as the eye primer and then just dab, dab that under my eyes and brush away any extra. Ah, portable, portable AC units. Yeah, that's what my son has in his house. He rents an older house and they don't have central air, so they use, win use window units as well. Okay. So I think that that corrector did a good job of covering up some of that darkness. And, you know, I have lines and bags and wrinkles under my eyes. and. Concealer is not magic, so it's not going to make it go away, but you know, we can make them look a little better. Okay, so I'm going to use that. Oh, that's a really good one too, Erin. I like that one. I'm um, going to use this e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in Feeling Shady. I remember the color. And I have this kind of cool flat angle brush that I got in an Ipsy. This is from La Russe. And so I'm going to see what this does for getting in and really contouring. Normally I don't contour and bronze. I kind of use bronzer as a contour and a bronzer because it's one less step. I don't know that most people really contour and bronze, but I want to use as many of my new products as I can. So we're going to do both. And so I'll go into this. I really like these putty bronzers. I have another one. I have this um, honey drip that is a warmer color and I've got a pretty good dip out of that one. So if you see these two side by side, this is the honey drip and this is the feeling shady. Um, so you can see how this is so much cooler than this one is. Okay, let's get in there. Hey Des, how you doing? Welcome from London. We got somebody from across the pond. How fun is, fun is that? How are you today, Des? All right, so we're going to go in right under that cheekbone. And yes, that's a very cool color. And I'm going to go ahead and put some on over here to disperse it. This is a nice brush. I don't think I've really used this one. It's good to see you too. I am working on trying on some new products I got from Flower Beauty and e.l.f. I love both of those companies a lot. And we're going to use this too to kind of chisel under this jawbone, kind of lift these saggy spots right here. Not really lift them, but give the illusion of lifting them. By using a cooler toned bronzer color or contour, you create a shadow. The shadows are kind of gray. And then I like to go right here in kind of a V shape. 
to help this little waddly part right here recede. And it just gives the illusion that your cheek, that your jawline is a little more sculpted than it actually is, more like it used to be. So that's a really pretty color. It's very subtle, which I like because I don't want to look muddy or like my face is dirty. And that, I lost a lid. Hmm. I'll have to find that later. Oh, there it is. <laughs> lost one of my bronzer lids. And so let's go on and powder my face now. I have this beautiful brush um, from Farah. It's the Powder and Go. Double-ended brushes seem like a better idea in theory than they end up being in practice. Does anybody else find that? Because you can't stick them in your brush holder to store them. They have to be stored this way, and then they're just kind of laying around on the table. But anyway, I'm going to use this big fluffy end to powder my face. And using the same Maybelline Fit Me, and I'm just going to kind of dab it around to get it on there, and then buff it in. Oh, you're having a heat wave too. So are we. Golly, it's been in the 90s. I don't know how to convert that to Celsius. You're probably better at that than I am. Um, but the good thing about that is it is haying season. We do live on a farm. And so this hot, dry, windy weather is great for getting the hay dry. Jen says she's even stopped bronzing and using a darker foundation in the bronzing areas. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I have to be really careful with two orange bronzers as well because when I get sun, it's more of a reddish brown than an orangish brown. And so it can look really unnatural if I'm not careful about it. But good idea using um, a deeper foundation. I've heard of people using just a deeper, um, like a powder foundation as well. And I think that could be really successful. So speaking of bronzer, we're going to go on to this Flower Beauty Heat Wave bronzer. This is so pretty. I have seen Jen Phelps use this one, and I've wanted it since I saw her using it. So this one is in Sunrise L1. Let me just give you a... And it's also just a really cool... This is weird. My camera's like backwards for me, so I'm having a rough time with... But anyway, it's also a very cool, there we go, a nice cool shade of bronzer. It has just a little bit of luminousness, luminosity, that's the word I'm looking for, luminosity to it, which I think in the summer is just so pretty. So I have a, another Farrah brush, and I'm going to swirl in this, um, tap it off a little, and I'm just going to kind of dock that just a little bit higher than the contour was. And this I'm going to use up here in this high forehead part that I have so that when the wind blows and my bangs go away, this is just kind of covered. Did you order the flower stuff or get it in store? I did order it, Erin. Um, I ordered it from Ulta, actually. Was it Ulta? Yes, it came in an Ulta order. And you, you can order from their website, too, actually. Back up. I ordered from the website because um, there were several things that I wanted and it made it worth it. I cannot find it in stores. It used to be at Ulta and it used to be at Walmart, but it's not anymore. You can get it at Ulta online though. So I am going to brush. This is also a really good thing to have if you don't have one of these color switches. Mine came from Shop Miss A, so it was only like a buck. And I use it for powders, I use it for eyeshadows. And it's just kind of a dense, like a funny sponge. And it helps to clean off that brush if you have too much on there or if you want to change color. So I am just using it to get off the extra. And then I can blend without depositing more. And you can go over your nose to, the idea with bronzer is you want to look like you've got touched by the sun and the idea with contour is to shade. So contour is going to be in the shadows of your face and bronzer would be where the sun would hit you so it's on the high points of the face. But I've never really understood if you do contour and bronzer and blush how that all stacks together. It seems to be a lot but we're going to do it today so we'll see how it works. And then 
with blush, I'm going to use this e.l.f. blush. I thought this was so pretty. These were on sale. I got this blush for like $2.60. And it is called Bright Pink, which is, you know, a pretty good. Let me open it up so we don't have the ring light. Anyway, I just thought for summer, this was just such a pretty. Oh, and it's really creamy. I hadn't had my fingers in it yet. So let's put that one right there, too. Anyway, isn't that just pretty for summer? Obviously, that's really bright and it's very pigmented, which is good to know so that I don't end up looking like a clown. So I have, I generally have two blush brushes because I'm lazy and I only wash my brushes like once a month. So I have one for cool toned pink blushes and then I have one for warmer peachy blushes so that they don't get too muddied up. And again, oops, use my color switch to make sure that there's nothing from the last time. Yes, I heard that on her latest video. Um, Lindsay, thanks for mentioning that. And hi, by the way, good to have you here. So I'm going to put some blush on there and definitely tap off the extra because this was very pigmented. And then I'm going to just barely touch and then use the extra for the other side. So that's very pigmented. And go back in, brush some more, and then blend. Oh, that is such a pretty blush for summer. And seriously, for $2.60, I know Jen had been showing one that was like a bubblegummy pink. And this, I don't know how this would compare to it, but I think it's probably really similar. And then my one of the biggest things that provoked my flower beauty order was I wanted this highlighting wand. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury. I got the color opal and you open it right here by twisting and then you squeeze up a little bit and then dab it on. It's so pretty, look at that. And then I use my finger tap it around and blend it in. And I always have a washcloth in my lap because otherwise I would have it all over my leg because I just reach down and wipe off any extra like that. And then if you need a little bit more to bring it up into the temple area, it's just so pretty. And Lindsay, I forgot when I watched that, that Jen compared that to the Life Proof. Um, can you still get that, Des, over in London? I know that originally, I think originally this was, um, what people found out about it from Boots. You guys, it would be sold in Boots. And then Walgreens, our Walgreens started carrying it here. And then it was discontinued. And then Soap and Glory picked it up and it was that kick butt, which was, they didn't call it butt, but I'm not gonna say that word on my channel. Um, and then that one was discontinued as well. So that is that Flower Beauty Light Wand and I just think it is so pretty. So, gotta make sure I closed it. Did not. Definitely like that. Just such a pretty uh, soft, highlight and it doesn't I don't think emphasize texture not that I, not that I really care that my texture is emphasized I have it and it's there and if I like it if I like a highlighter and it emphasizes my texture I'm going to wear it anyway so all right that pretty much takes care of the complexion so let's get some eyebrows on because I'm looking a little crazy I'm going to use the LA Colors Browy Wowie got this one at Dollar General I did a recent full face of LA Colors video and I was stunned by how good everything was. There were a couple of the $2 palettes that weren't as good. There was one that was really good. Which one was it? This one, the $2, the nude palette was really good. Um, the rose, I had struggled with the rose. So if you're gonna pick those up, I struggled with that one. And this one was kind of in the middle. 
Um, no, the C does the CYO. Um, I'm not sure who the, the manufacturer was, but anyway, it was just, it's just so good. And I, this was my second or third one and I'm kind of rationing it because I know once it's gone, I can't get it anymore. So let's just, I am not one who spends a heck of a lot of time on my brows. I just kind of, but I don't have much in the way of brows. So I have to do something. This color is a little bit dark. So I have to be careful not to get too much. I have no tail at all, no hair on the tail of my brow at all. It's just drawn on. And part of that is thyroid. I had some thyroid issues a few years back and I've kind of resolved those, but they just didn't come back. Is it really does? Oh my goodness. So, Lindsay, Jez says we can, you can still get it at Boots in London. We might have to, we might have to set up like a drop shipment from Des or something to get our CYO. I got all excited and forgot I was doing my eyebrows. Yes, Lindsay, um, you're, thank you for explaining that. CYO was a sister company to Soap and Glory. Um, <laughs> and so that's why Soap and Glory took over that foundation. Unfortunately, when Soap and Glory took it over, they also doubled the price. I think it was $7 from Walgreens. And when Soap and Glory took it over, um, it was 14 So, but you couldn't get it for very long. And I don't understand why they would have discontinued it because it seemed to be really popular. Oh, hey, new topic. Did you guys all hear that Revlon is filing bankruptcy? That was big news yesterday. And they own a lot of brands. I don't know, is Revlon the parent company or is, or is there a parent company over them? I think Elizabeth Arden is in that group. And um, so that's another shakeup. You know, we had BH not too long ago and they were bought by Makeup Revolution. And so now Revlon, don't know a lot of details if it's a chapter 11 and they're gonna restructure or excuse me, if they will be purchased by somebody, but that was very interesting. The palette I decided to use today is the Alter Ego Temptress palette. I kind of had forgotten about this one. And then when I did my which 10 would I keep uh, video, I'll link it down below after this live stream is done and everything. I was like, oh, I haven't used that in a really long time. And it's so pretty. This is a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. And it is still available on the Alter Ego website. They have some amazing dupes. They have dupes for Natasha Denona and um, Too Faced, I think, and just, just a lot of them, but they're really good. So like I do with pretty much every eyeshadow look that I do, I'm going to use the uh, ivory color over here and set my eyeshadow primer and lay down a base that will help to make blending easier. So tap out any creasing. and just dab it in. Obviously, if your skin is darker than mine, this will not be a good blending color for you. So you would need to find one that matches your skin tone. There we go. So that's always, that's always my first step is to lay that down. And I am going to use uptown right here in my crease so go in tap off a little extra and i have 
really crepey eyes. So my skin moves around a lot. So what I do first is I tap the color in to lay it down before I start doing any blending. And that helps to not get patchy and skippy. And then because my eyes are hooded, I go up right up underneath this orbital bone because when I open my eyes, if I don't, you can't see anything that I put down there. And I asked Abigail, who is my daughter, if I should go bronzy or with the pinks, and she said bronze. So that's what we're doing. And then on the other side, tap. Well, this is a lot more fun getting ready for work with having some friends along. Lindsay, what are you up to today? Any big plans? Do you guys have any plans for the summer? Any vacations coming up? I know, Des, you've got one planned. <laughs> I don't know about that. Have you heard how many, all the stumbles and uhs and, and that sort of thing that I'm doing? I'm glad, though, I didn't try to, to do a live like earlier in my journey because it would have been a disaster. It is taking me a lot longer to put on my makeup than it normally does. I'm, I'm looking at my timer and I'm at 41 minutes and uh, I'm surprised you all are hanging in here with me. I appreciate it. Okay, so that's the crease color. And then let's see what I want. I think I'm gonna go ahead in with the shimmers first to see what goes on with that. And so let's do this deeper bronzy color right here, Mistress, first. And I'm just going to use my finger. I always think, oh, I should use a brush to put on my shimmers because it looks more professional. And then I end up with shimmer all over my face. And so the heck with professionalism. Let's just do what works. So that's that shimmer right there. It's really pretty. And I just kind of dab it and try to be careful not to get it everywhere which, you know, sometimes I'm more successful at than others. See, I got some down there. Don't worry about it, we'll fix it. Lindsay says her big kids are at day camps, so it's her and the little one getting some chores done, cleaning up. Oh, Lindsay, you homeschool too, how exciting, so do we. And so does Erin, actually. Erin's in the comments here and they homeschool. So how old are your kids? I have graduated three. And I have a rising junior going uh, still at home. And this, I believe, is the beginning of our 23rd year of homeschooling. The nice thing about having done it so long is I kind of know what works. And I have all my lesson plans done. So it makes it easier to just add in a few electives that are specific to that kid. And uh, okay, so there's, see now, now you got me all rattled with the multitasker thing and now I'm, now I'm kind of stumbling around. Okay, so let's go into the one next to that Ritz for a little bit brighter on the inner part. And you can see how that one is a little bit lighter and brighter. So we're gonna put that Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Wow. Not sure that this is going to be what I would call an everyday summer look, but does it really matter? If you like it, you wear it, right? So let's take this gold. The gold is called guilt. Not guilt like I feel guilty, but guilt like gilded. And put that right in the center where those two meet. Just to kind of help with that blend and to really make it pop. That's very pretty. Uh, Jen says, I wasn't feeling good and hadn't put on my makeup, which only happens when not feeling good, but I inspired her to go get her makeup on and get ready. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, that, we, that I inspired you to get your makeup on and it made, made you feel better. I really think sometimes makeup is therapy. It, it isn't just about feeling like you look better. It's the whole process of just kind of taking care of yourself that, that seems to lift your mood. I gotta get a drink. I'm 
a little parched here, excuse me. And puts you in a better frame of mind. So I'm glad that that worked for, that way for you, Jen. And Lindsay says she has a 10, eight and three year old. Oh, what fun years. That's so, that's so wonderful. And where was I? Okay, we are going to, I don't know, this this might be a little much, but you know, what the heck, it's, it's makeup, it washes off. I'm gonna go into Sterling, which is just this beautiful, and if you watched my, uh, which 10 would I keep? This palette pretty much made the cut because of that color right there, Sterling. So I'm gonna put it in the inner corner and just brighten that up. So put it there and bring it just a little bit under on the lower lash line as well. Such a pretty color. And it just, I like putting a lighter color there because I do have a lot of darkness, as I said, in that inner corner and putting something light there just brightens it up so nice. All right, let's see what we can do with the under eye. And I have a tiny little pencil brush. This is from Menge. It doesn't have a number or anything on it. And I'm going to go into After Hours, which is this darker brown right there. And well, first, I need to clean up a little fallout. So I'm just gonna take my concealer sponge and brush away just a little bit of that shimmer that ended up under my eyes. And now we're gonna go into After Hours. And I'm just kind of twirling the brush right on the end like that, just twirling it. And then I'm going to tap it off really, really well so that I don't end up with fallout or extra under my eye. And I'm just going to very gently drag that under and a little bit in the outer V area. I don't want to get too deep and smoky with this. It is a daytime look after all. A little drama is okay. I mean, I work in a theater, and as I've said before, and I'm sure that I will say again until people are sick of me saying it, if you can't have drama at the theater, where can you have drama? Okay. So that just brings, I don't bring that darker color all the way in. I think it makes your eyes close down, and we don't want that. And, um, I don't go really dark under my eyes either for the same reason, but I do like having it in the outer third like that. And let's go to some eyeliner. I'm going to use this Galactic Brown for my tight line. Um, in case you're curious about the difference between the tight line and waterline, I use tight line to refer to the upper waterline and then just say my waterline for the lower one. I don't know if that's how everybody refers to it, but that's what I do. And so I wear contacts. If I'm not careful, I will draw eyeliner on my contact, which is a bear to get off. And so when I tight line, and somebody made a comment one time about how I tight lined and couldn't blink. That's actually because of my mom. When I was a dancer, I was like three and four, you know, and she'd be doing my makeup for recitals and stuff. And I learned not to blink because I kind of got in trouble if I did. So anyway, I can do this without seeing the pencil, but it does take practice for that. So if you have trouble with actually doing this process and you back away from the pencil or whatever, just know it takes practice. And I don't look at the pencil. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and then I press up using the pencil to press up on the lid itself. The other key with this is making sure that you have a good pencil. If it takes a lot of pressure to transfer, it's going to be harder and it's going to be, it's going to make your eyes water and it's going to be really uncomfortable. So you want to make sure it's soft enough to transfer well, but not so soft that it transfers to the lower water line. That makes me mad. And I will throw away a pencil if it transfers to the water, lower waterline. Because I don't want dark on my lower waterline.
And when I get to where my contact is, I push up. And if I have to blink, then I just kind of stop and blink and then go back in until I have the color that I want. And so much more lately, I have not actually been doing eyeliner above the lashes, but I'm going to today just because, you know, we're doing a full face of makeup, so why, so why not? And so I'm going to use the Companion liquid liner that came with that. That was in an Ipsy. And I must use, hey, Valerie, how are you? Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Everybody say hi to Valerie. And so I'm going to use my 10X mirror because I'm blind without it, even though I wear contacts. When I close my when I can do this eye, the right eye, okay, because this one has my close-up work, but if I close the other one, I can't see a thing, so. And I'm just going to stay really close to the lash line, because if you have hooded eyes, if you do a thick line, then you completely lose your lid space when you open it. I really don't want to do that. So I, be, one of the reasons I like eyeliner is because my skin is so fair. And if I don't put eyeliner on, especially that tight line, and then I put mascara on, you see the black of the mascara and then the lightness of my eye, and I just think it looks weird. It looks weird on me, I guess I should say. I've never noticed it on anybody else, so I don't know. Um, so if you don't mind it, then obviously don't do it. And my multitasking abilities end with trying to put eyeliner on and speak at the same time. Valerie says she tried to apply tight liner yesterday and it was easy and looked good. Very good. I'm so excited. Hey, Sylvia, how are you? Welcome, welcome. And we're, we're getting a full face of makeup on. I have some new elf products and flower products that I've tried. And so far, I'm really kind of liking them. Um, I do have a little bit of fallout from my eyeshadow, so I'm going to brush that away. And looking in my 10X, I have just a tiny, tiny little bit of creasing from my concealer, which isn't a big deal. I'll just kind of pat it out. Generally, when I do that, if I have a little bit of creasing, I'll check right before I'm done with my makeup, pat it out, and then it's good. Thanks, Sylvia. I'm having a lot of fun. I was really nervous right before I hit play. And I thought, gosh, there's not going to be anybody here. And then I had two people show up, Aaron and um, who was who was here first? Aaron and now that y'all are here, Jen, I think. No, Erica. Aaron and Aaron were the Erica and Aaron were the first two here. And then I started relaxing and having fun. So and Lindsay says she prefers tight lining because of the hooded eyes. Yep. Hi, hey, Leanna, how are you? Are you on lunch? You guys are probably swamped at the resort with summer starting. And trying to figure out where I'm at. Oh, on the lower waterline, I always like to use a um, lighter pencil to brighten that area up. And I should have sharpened this before I started, but I didn't, so I'll sharpen it now. This one is the LA Girl Shockwave liner. LA Girl and LA Colors is just, they've gotten so good and they're so inexpensive. So this one is just this really pretty pearlescent color. I cannot figure out this camera. It's backwards or something. Anyway, it's really pretty and pearlescent and I just really, really like it. So that's going to go in my wa lower waterline. And again, I take this little puff. And I don't use this for anything except when I need to pull something gently on my eyes. And I know people say you should never pull on your eyes, but when you have crepey skin increasing and that kind of stuff, you kind of have to, to straighten it out. And at that point, it's kind of all the whole point of not tugging is so it doesn't get crepey and lined. And anyway, so I tug and I just kind of gently pull down. And again, look past what you're doing by looking in the mirror. And if you freshly sharpen your pencils, they will transfer better. 
Um, if you have trouble with it transferring, you could try using a Q-tip to very gently kind of dry the waterline or warm it up on your hand and then it might transfer that way. Ah, Des, you're a tugger too, all right. And I'm not apologizing for tugging, I'm just explaining why I tug because some people get a little offended by that. But they, the ones who say that, aren't the ones who have the creepy eyes. So they don't know what we're dealing with. It's kind of like when you're in a restaurant before you have kids, and there's that toddler over there that's being being awful, and you say, oh, well, when I, when I have kids, my kids will never act like that. And then you get ones that do. So anyway. And I usually put down one layer first, then go to the other eye. And by then, this one has dried a little bit. And the pencil will stick to the pencil better than it sticks to your waterline. So by doing that second coat, it gives you nice, even coverage. And I just really like the effect of that brighter color. I have several. I have a lavender and I have a silver. I have a yellow, a white, and kind of a shimmery pink pearl. So these are kind of my arsenal of un lower lower waterline pencils that, oh, there's a gold in here too. So I'm like, where's my gold at? No, I can't find the gold one. I think it's in a I think it's in a tray of makeup that I used in a video so that I remember for the description box. Anyway, just really like that effect. Hey Melly Mel, how you doing? Oh, thanks, Valerie. Yeah, I don't typically like to use stark white unless, you know, there are certain there are certain eye looks that can that can pull it off, but I think white is very stark. You need to try the LA Girl cream blushes in the two. I have one. Oh, actually, mine's in LA Colors, um, but I think it's the exact same thing. This is the blush up, and um, I love it, but I will look for the LA Girl ones, too. But I think they're the same thing as this, and when I did my full face of LA Colors, I used this. It is so good. You're right, Sylvia. So good. But I'll look for the LA Colors ones, too. Okay. I think I just have mascara and setting spray. And I like to do my setting spray before I do mascara because of my hooded eyes. If I put, I'm doing really good. Thanks, Mel. Um, if I put setting spray on after my mascara, when I open my eyes, I have dots all on my brow bone. So setting spray goes first. And I'm using my e.l.f. Microfine Setting Mist. I love this so, so, so very much. Um, I want to try the blue one, the, the blue light one, and um, but I'm afraid it's not going to be as good. And then I'll wish I had this one. So, and I really hope that they don't discontinue this because it was part of the Mint Melt collection. Um, so I'm hoping it's not discontinued and that sort of thing. Okay, so that is drawing. I'm going to curl my eyelashes. So does anybody have any vacation plans? Again, this is something I don't really talk a lot when I'm doing. Yes, Elf is amazing. Um, I am trying. One thing that I've had trouble now with ELF is finding a foundation that I like. I did not have any luck with the Camo Powder Foundation or with the Camo CC Cream, so I'm trying this one. It's the ELF Flawless Satin Foundation. And so far, right now, I'm really liking it. It's on this side of my face, and I have the Flower Beauty on this side of my face. The flower is a little bit more luminous. This is definitely more satin. And right now, I'm kind of liking it. So for my mascara, I am going to use the Believe Beauty High Definition Skinny Mascara in Black. And I like this because it's a really tiny little wand. And I like this as a first coat because it really separates lashes. I kind of just really get it down at the base and wiggle. 
Um, but it's great for separating and putting that first coat on. And I really like it for a lower lash line mascara. Believe Beauty is so good. Do you guys, have you guys used Believe Beauty from Dollar General? I like their foundation. I like their concealer. Their liquid lip is really amazing. Hey, Andy, you're here. Andy works nights. And so when I said I was going to be doing a live, she's like, oh, I'm usually sleeping. But she got up just to see my first live. You are such a good friend, Andy. I'm glad that you're here. And yes, um, affordable makeup is where it's at as far as I'm concerned. I do have a few high-end things, but they've been gifts or came in an Ipsy or something like that. And while I'm happy to have them, there are very few things that I would actually consider spending my own money on. And not because I don't think they're good, but because I'm a quantity over quality maybe kind of, no, that's not true because I'm a quantity with quality kind of person. Um, why, why is there a sad face there, Andy? Was that a mistake? Um, I don't want you to be sad. When I look at spending $40, on a high-end product, on one high-end product. And then I think that I could get three or four products from the drugstore or Dollar General or even Dollar Tree where I could get more. I'm gonna take more. Especially because drugstore quality has gotten so very good. All right, so that is the first layer. And then if you watched any of my eye video videos, we don't have Dollar General in Southern California. Yes. Ah, okay, good, Andy. I'd rather it be a fat finger mistake than the fact that you're sad. Essence Lash Princess, the green one, false lash effect. Difficult for me to say, amazing to use. So I'm gonna put that on for my second coat. And if you've looked closely, you will see that I have pretty much mascara everywhere. I always do. The harder I try, the worse it gets. So I am really good at cleaning up mascara messes. I figure the more mistakes I make, the more I can show you guys how to fix them. See, look right there. You see what I just did? Every stinking time. Drugstore. Yeah, Dollar General needs to expand out west. So I am going to let that mascara mess dry while I put on some lipstick. And then I think I can take my hair down though. You know what's funny is I've always been really self conscious about my forehead because I have such a high forehead. And so I've always had bangs. And I did not want to be seen really anywhere without bangs. And when I did Nutcracker, I had to have my hair off my face. And I was really stressed about it. And now here I sit like two, three times a week with my hair off my face. And it's, you know what? It's really no big deal. I don't know why I was so concerned about it. Yes. Good point, Valerie. Um, I know that there are some things that it's definitely worth it to spend the money on. Um, skincare might be one of them because the skincare is kind of the foundation, although there's some really good affordable skincare. But I have a son who's a mechanic and he has drawers full of snap-on tools because when you use those tools every single day, you have to have the best. And so as an artist or something like that, yeah, you're gonna buy really good base tools but then it's good to have things that are still good that you can play with. So speaking of Believe Beauty, I have a lip liner here in 
barely there. I just did the same mistake as my mascara right now. Hey, Veronica, how are you? Well, you know what? We can clean up together, okay? So I'm going to use this lip liner. It's a nice nude pink. It's not too pink, but it's also not too orange. So it really is a true nude. Oh, yeah, Veronica's getting ready with us. That's exciting. Everybody say hello to Veronica. And then my favorite, absolute favorite lipstick is the Flower Beauty Naked Blush Matte. And the lid doesn't stay on, so it's really hard to carry in my purse. But that's all I have left. Do you see that? That little bit? I'm actually going to use up a lipstick. And this one is the perfect pink nude for me. And I have to stop talking for just a second while I put this on my mouth. Hang on. Mel, I was terrified. I was sitting here. I, last night, I finally thought, oh, you know what? I should probably figure out how to go live on YouTube. And I realized I had no idea how to do it. But I'm doing this through StreamYard. And um, when I was sitting here like with three minutes left to go and I finally figured everything out and I had everything lined out in front of me, um, I was so nervous. But it's been so much fun. Of course, the thing you think about is nobody's going to show up. But then I thought, well, you know what? If nobody shows up, then I have a video that will be live on, will be on YouTube for perpetuity and people can find it that way. So if you kind of just think about it as just another video, but then maybe a couple people will show up and you can do your makeup with some friends. And as soon as I saw that I had two people in my live, it was like, oh, I can just put on my makeup and have some fun. Okay, so hope you can see why that is one of my favorite lipsticks because it just always looks really good. And this matte formula is not drying, but it does last a really long time. Okay, so let's see if we can get rid of this. Um, makeup disaster well okay it's not a disaster that might have been a little hyperbolic hang on i gotta find a brush that will work to do it that isn't dirty okay so i have this is a teeny teeny tiny little brush and it's very stiff i think it's um a lips a lip liner or a lipstick brush i don't know exactly what it is but this is the kind of brush i use to clean up the mascara disasters and take my little 10x again but I'm not going to use the 10x too much I'll do it this way so you guys can see hopefully and I get under it and flick okay this was a pretty thick one so I had to let it dry a little longer but I get under it and kind of flick at it and yes it's taking up a little bit of the foundation but I'll fix it Okay, so the mascara is gone. And while I'm here, I might as well check my other. A little one on this side too. That one was easier to get rid of. Okay, um, sometimes I'll have little dots up here and you can just flick them away. I still have my sponge from my foundation and I'm just going to press that into that corner until it's covered and blended. That's it, it's done. So one more thing, because I like glossy lips, even when I put on a matte, and that is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in Moon. And I don't know if you can see, but it is almost gone. I love, love the Lifter Glosses. I only have two. I have Moon and Stone. So this is my pink one, and then I have kind of a taupey, warm colored one. And I'm just going to hit that right there. And I am ready for work. I want to thank all of you. Does anybody has, have any questions before we close out this live? We've been going for just over an hour. And I just want to thank everybody for showing up. Yes, Mel, I can't wait to do our collaboration. It's going to be so much fun. And I'm so excited that I've gotten to meet some new YouTubers, especially in this mature beauty space. I think that there is room for so many because a lot of times, hey, Sylvia, how are you? Good to see you. A lot of times when you watch a mature YouTuber, 
she's somebody in her 30s or 40s. And I don't know about you guys, if you're over 50, if you're in your 30s and your 40s and you're here, I am ecstatic to have you. But if you're in your 50s, your skin changes again. It's different in your 40s than it was in your 30s and it was in your 20s, but it changes again. And I would assume when I get to 60, it's probably going to be different still. But I think that there's a lot of room on the YouTube platform for us more mature gals. And I'm just really happy that I've gotten to know so many. And it's, a, it's an amazing community. I was afraid a little bit about this community because of some of the stuff that's gone on in the past, but that is not what I have found. So thank you, Andy. And I want to thank everybody for being here, for supporting me on my very first live. It was so much fun. And I hope you had fun too. I hope that you have a beautiful, blessed day. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye, everyone.